Hi everyone, my name is Lawrence Hooker and I'm a Senior Application Specialist here at Excitec. In this short video we're going to be taking a look at some of the new features of Autodesk Revit Structure 2016. OK, let's get going. So the first thing I'd like to look at is perhaps the most prominent new uh, set of features which are all um, angled around reinforcement. I think over the last five years Autodesk have made uh, many improvements to the way we can reinforce uh, the model in 3D not only just for the modeling side but also for how we can basically annotate reinforcement bar and also how we can now schedule it. So in Revit 2016 the first thing I'd like to show you is the ability to schedule reinforcement bar uh, more effectively. So at the moment you can see that we have a fairly simple arrangement of reinforcement. We have some pad foundations in here and some structural columns uh, that have been reinforced as well. First thing I'm going to do here is actually use a platform feature of 2016. Very simple tool here but effective called the selection box. So I'll click that and you can now see it literally isolates that uh, bar um, very effectively. So now we've got that uh, all isolated ready for us to start working on. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on. I'm going to uh, show you the RC schedule for this particular uh, model. And you can see here that we have now, let's just rename that member. So we have now basically the member at the top, so that's pad foundation one. We have the various different bar marks that reside in there. More importantly, we also now have number of members. And you can see that I have four members in this particular um, area. How does that work? Well, let's take a look at the field here, and you can see that we have three new fields. We have the host mark, the host category, and also the host count. I'd like to explain that by going back into the three-dimensional model and taking a look at what we've actually got. So, if I pick the foundation itself, what we'll notice here is that I've given this the mark PF01. If I select one of the reinforcement sets within this um, foundation, you'll notice that if we have a look at some of the metadata underneath this, we have the host category, which of course is a structural foundation, and the mark of the host. Now, you can control where this reinforcement goes by picking the relevant host. So in this case, this rebar set actually belongs to the pad foundation. So, if I... I've grouped this one here, and what I'm going to do is copy it. So if I make a copy, like this, select the um, pad foundation itself. I'm just going to ensure that it has the same mark. So we'll call this one PF01. And now let's take a look back into our schedule. So you'll now see the RC schedule has updated itself. So now we've got number of members, five. And of course, what it's now doing is taking the number of bars in each uh, range, multiplying that by the number of members, which is giving us the total number of 60. So in previous releases of Revit, that was a manual calculation. And of course, manual interventions and calculations within a model can lead to errors. So this is a really, really good tool for 2016. Okay. Staying with the theme of reinforcement, we're now going to have a look at improvement to the path command. So the path command in previous releases would have distributed reinforcement bar around the edge of a, a structural element, such as a slab, but the limitation was the bar had to be straight. Now, you could have actually put hooks at the start and the end of the bar, but for example, if we wanted to run a U-bar around the edge of a slab, such as this slab here, we would have had to use um, single uh, ranges instead of path. But we can now, uh, as I say, utilize the new feature of path reinforcement. So I'm going to select the path command, select the slab, First thing I'm going to do is select the edges of the slab. I'm going to lock these in as well, so they're constrained. The path reinforcement is now completely outside of its host, so I'm going to use the flip command just to put the uh, path reinforcement inside the concrete. Now we can set up our shape. So you can see in here that I'm using shape code 21 in, in this example. I have a spacing of 300 between the bars here. I'm going to use a H10 for this. We can actually set up alternating bars as well, so you could have um, a different shape in there with a different spacing and so on. But let's go ahead and, and accept that. We'll now select the bar and just filter the reinforcement out. I'm just going to make this appear um, solid on the screen, so we'll go to the view visibility states. 
Um, in this example, we'll view this unobscured and also as a solid, like so. Now, you can see that the U bar isn't quite in the correct orientation, so I can very easily hit the space bar here and you can see it, it orientates those U bars into the correct uh, orientation for me. If I select the path reinforcement again, I can control the primary length of the bar. So this will be the um, the legs on the U bar there. So if I set that to 400, yep, you can see all those links have changed. So that's quite useful. Okay, moving away from reinforcement, we're now going to take a look at some of the new tools for analytical models. Okay, first thing I'd like to mention is if we select a beam now, you'll notice that we have a very simple shape handle which will flip the structural framing ends. So if I initiate my analytical model in here, you can clearly see the start of the beam is on the left, the end of the beam is on the right. If I select the beam and now flip the end of the beam here, you will now see the ends change. So that's actually a, a much better way of doing it. In previous releases, we had to right mouse over the beam and flip structural framing ends on the context menu. Okay, let's just reverse that back. What I'm going to do here is actually draw a new beam in here as well. So we'll click on the beam command. One of the nice things we can do now, when we go to our type selector, you'll notice we have the ability to search. So if I type in 305 there, you can see that Revit goes through and finds all of the members with 305 in it. So that's quite a nice addition as well. So now we'll draw our beam in. Now we're going to snap that perpendicular to this member here. There's the beam. And what I want to do is actually now show you a completely new um, command which is going to allow us to record the member end forces. So I'm going to tab key to the analytical model and if we look down through the property set, first thing we'll do is set up our fixity. So here we're going to set the start release to pinned and the end release also to pinned. And now if I go into my uh, member end forces here, what we'll now see is we can actually put um, a member end force into this dialog box. So in this case, I'm going to have uh, minus 2.5 kilonewtons there, and the same in here, minus 2.5, and OK. Now, what's quite nice with that is it actually records that into the analytical model. And of course, as you'd imagine, you can actually tag that as well. So if I go ahead and produce a tag here, yeah, we'll tag by category and I'll just cycle to the um, beam itself and you can see now that's tagging the start and the end forces. Another good thing with this is I can see in the future that this information will be gleaned from products such as robot structural analysis or maybe even links out to third party analysis tools. So that information will likely be populated automatically into the um, members those member end forces could then be read by fabrication tools such as Advanced Steel to help us um, design connections. So I can see a lot of scope with uh, this new command. Okay, staying on the analytical model, let's move away and have a look at the 3D model. So in here I have those um, same members that we were just looking at in uh, the plan and also have a curved wall. One of the new features now is to be able to actually put loads along curved elements. So if we go to the Analyze ribbon, you'll notice we have the load command up here. I'm going to use a hosted area load in this example. And you can see here that I've set a wind load as my load case. In this example, it's going to host this to the local coordinate system. So you can clearly see that the Z direction or the Z axis is pointing away from my curved um, panel here. And I've set a force of 1.5 kilonewtons. So if I pick the curved element now, you can see that Revit now projects that curve, um, that curved load along the face. Now, perhaps if that was a wind load, I'd want to actually change the projection. If I go ahead and look at a plan view on this, what we might be required to do now is actually have a wind load from an easterly direction. So in this example, I would change the orient to perhaps the project, and then I could actually put my force down the relevant axes, so perhaps down the um, x-axis there. And you can now clearly see the load is now um, projected from that east of the axis. So that's a really, really good tool. Very, very useful. Next up, we're going to take a look at structural steel profiles. Let's start by taking a look at the properties of a universal beam. So if I select this beam here and we go into the type properties for the UB, what you'll notice here is we have all of the various different dimensions set up for us in here. 
as well as some structural analysis properties as well. So you can see that we have uh, moments of inertia in there, the modulus of elasticity, and so on. Another really nice feature with Revit is all of this, uh, all of these properties and parameters can be automatically set up for particular sections. What I'm going to do here is go ahead and create a new family. So we'll go and choose metric structural framing and open this family up. Now, if I go to the family types dialog box, you'll notice that there's very little data in there at the moment. However, if I now go to family categories and parameters, you'll notice here that we have section shape. Currently, it's not defined. So if I go ahead and browse our various different section shapes, you can see as I click through the section shapes here, Revit gives us a nice preview of each section. It's quite a large library of section shapes in here. In this case, if I'm going to do um, a standard kind of eye beam, I'm going to use the eye shape parallel flange. If I say OK to that, OK again, What's now happened is Revit's populated all of those parameters ready for me to start to build my section shape up. Not only has it uh, created all the physical dimensions required for the section, but it's also um, created the analytical properties that I could populate as well. Now I can see in future releases this information will be um, semi-automated. For example, um, the structural analysis area, um, if it knows the area of the shape, it should better calculate things like the IXX and the IYY and so on. So again, I think this, this area will be under development and will uh, expand in future releases. But nevertheless, this is going to lead to a, a great consistency within content creation moving forward into the future. Another small change that Autodesk have made in 2016 is to trusses. Now, this particular truss, you can see, is obviously a vertical truss at the moment. What I'm going to do is just rotate this over. So let's lay it on its side. So rotate the truss at 90 degrees. Now, when you rotate the truss, you can actually see that not only has it rotated the truss, but it's also rotated the main universal beams in there. So what we now have is the ability to ask Revit not to rotate or to rotate those cords with the truss. So if I uncheck that option here, you can now see that the UB sections are obviously vertical for load bearing capabilities. So that's a small but quite a nice little change there. Let's move away from the modeling side now and I'm going to go into some of the annotations. Now, you can see here I have a tag which is tagging up the floor slab but also it's showing the finished floor level, soffit level and the structural slab level. This tag basically is a normal floor tag and you can see as I place the floor tag down it will simply just go ahead and read all of these different levels. So here's an example in this example here. Let's just get rid of the leader line because that doesn't look particularly good. Uh, we'll take the leader off. Okay, and you can obviously see now we've got a completely different set of um, levels and so on. So how does this work in? Well, if I select the tag and I edit the family we have extended parameters now for um, levels. So in here you can see that in this particular floor slab I've been able to add elevation at top, elevation at bottom and also elevation at top core. So what's going to happen in this case for multi-layered things like walls and slabs we can actually have um, the SSL level shown as well as the FFL. Okay, now basically you can use these extended elevation parameters in uh, beams, braces, structural floors and foundation slabs. So very, very useful. So we've got top, top core, bottom core, bottom and also the reference level as well that we can actually bring through and use. Okay, great. Just before we finish up, I'd like to just show you uh, another platform feature which is to do with revisions. So. Let's go ahead and make a revision. So I'm going to put a uh, revision cloud around this pad foundation here. Okay, we'll make sure we set the right sequence for that cloud. So I'll select the cloud here. I'm just going to ensure that that's sequence 7. Now, what will happen is this. If we now take a look through here, you can see that we've got P2 here, changed pad foundation and the date. And then obviously down here we have the current revision. So the new feature is that if we go into the revisions dialog box, you'll notice here that we have alphanumeric and also numeric. 
And if I click on alphanumeric options in here, what we can do is we can actually separate by commas the revisions we'd like to use. So you can see here I'm starting off with a, a dash, then going directly into P1, P2, P3, and so on. And you can see we've also got similar features for the numeric option. So that's quite a nice little platform feature there. Okay, so it just remains for me to say thank you very much for your time, for watching our video. Um, if you need any help or assistance, don't hesitate to call us on the number you can see now in front of you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.